Hello everybody! This is my Worldcon 2018 book haul, plus a couple of other things that I got in August because why not? Um, I went to Worldcon ready to buy things. I had a shopping list. I knew what tables and booths I wanted to go to, and I did. I got things. I have like 20 things to show you, I think. Um, so I'm going to go through these in the order in which I went to the various booths because that's how my shopping list was arranged. So the first uh, place that I stopped at is Larry Smith Booksellers, which is, I think, one of the largest booksellers that goes every year to Worldcon. I saw them in 2016 as well, and they were perfectly positioned. As you walked into the dealer's hall, they were right there with all of their new books spread out. So I got um, five things there, and I have a sixth book, which I actually bought it, but I gave it away and then I got another copy. And that is The Faded Sky by Mary Robin at Kowal. Um, I bought a copy while I was there on the same day that this free copy arrived from the publisher. So I ended up giving uh, the copy I bought away to Joe because he needed one. So I didn't get to read it um, on the way home on the plane, but I have it now. So thank you very much to Tor for sending me a copy. This is the sequel to The Calculating Stars. It's the um, second book in this Lady Astronaut duology. And I've done a full review of the first book. I'm not going to go into this one too much in case it spoils uh, the first one at all, but I'm pretty sure this is where Elma York gets to go to Mars. Probably the moon and then the Mars. I am so, so excited to read this. Um, and then I got Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi. Um, I ran back over and got this from that bookseller after I saw um, the Beyond Anglophone SFF panel where this was mentioned again. Um, one of the people speaking on that was uh, Saudi Arabian and was talking about Arabic SF and this came up. I've heard of it many times before but never was sure if it was speculative fiction enough for my tastes. Um, and I'm actually reading it right now. I'm about a um, quarter of the way through it, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, in some ways, the structure of it is reminding me of The Q by uh, Basmal Abd Abdelaziz. Yes. <laughs> Had to look at it for a second. Um, uh, not, not the same kind of story, but um, following the individual experiences and, and days and stuff of people who live in the same neighborhood and experience the same events and things. Um, and, and there is a Frankenstein's monster in it, so it's, it's quite good so far. Um, and then I got a physical copy of God's Monsters and the Lucky Peach by Kelly Robson. Um, I've read this novella already. It came out in March, I think, and I did a full review of it. It's one of my favorite things I've read so far this year, so I really, really wanted a physical copy. I was going to get this signed by Kelly Robson because she was at the convention. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to track her down, and I don't... I think she had a signing and I didn't make it to that, but um, I'm very glad to have a copy of this now. And then I got The Atheist in the Attic by Samuel R. Delaney. This is one of the outspoken authors' books from PM Press, and it was one that was on my list to get. You'll be seeing more of these because right after I went to the Larry Smith bookseller tables, I went over to PM Press and got more of them. So I don't know what's in it, but it's a mini collection. I think it has a short story and some other um, odds and ends in it, and um, it'll probably be, probably be really good. Um, and one of the most exciting things that I got there was Toddy Went West by Nikhil Singh. I believe this is an acid trip of a book. Um, this is the U.S. edition that was published very recently by Rosarium Publishing. I was excited to find a copy because I only saw one and Rosarium didn't have a table there this year and I was hoping to go to their table so I got it at the other place. And I've heard about it multiple times. This was mentioned in Jeff Ryman's 100 African SF Writers series that he did for uh, Strange Horizons, I think. Um, and it's supposed to be incredibly weird, and I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, but I really want to try it. And then I got In Gathering, which is The Complete People Stories by Zenner Henderson. I've read at least one of the people's stories. It was in Women of Futures Past, which is an anthology um, edited by Christine Catherine Rush. I recommend that anthology so highly. I really liked the story by Zenner Henderson in there, and this made it to my uh, TBR list uh, because it's a complete collection. It is published by Nesfa Press, and I think they do amazing hardcovers. 
of um, older SF and things like that. Um, let's see if it says anything about the people stories because you probably want to know what that is. It's, <laughs> it's not self-explanatory. Um, so Zena Henderson is best remembered for her stories of the people, which appeared in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction from the early 50s to the mid 70s. The people escaped the destruction of their home planet and crashed on Earth in the Southwest just before the turn of the century. Fully human in appearance, they possessed many extraordinary powers. Henderson's people stories tell of their struggles to fit in and to live their lives as ordinary people, unmolested by fearful and ignorant neighbors. The people are us at our best as we hope to be and where with work and with luck we may be in some future. Um, which sounds very appropriate for right now. Then I went to the PM press table and I got four more of the Outspoken Authors books. So I have Totalitopia by John Crowley, um, Fire by Elizabeth Hand, um, Report from Planet Midnight by Nalo Hopkinson, and The Lucky Strike by Kim Stanley Robinson. There was one more that I very badly wanted. It's Eleanor Arneson's and they didn't have it there. Um, I also want the one by Rachel Pollock, but it doesn't come out until November, so I didn't expect to see it there. Um, but I will definitely be getting those two probably by the end of the year. And I'm, I, I know I'm a sucker for all the matching editions and I want to see them all lined up on my shelf, but also they're really lovely little collections of, you know, short stories and essays and an interview with the authors and stuff. So hopefully you'll be seeing these very soon because I can read one of them in a day. I should be able to knock a bunch of them out in a row. Then I went to the Heike Soro booth and had my moment with Taiyo Fuji. Um, there were some things there that I had on my shopping list that I got right away, but also, yes, I bought the books that Fuji specifically pointed out to me. Um, so the two that I grabbed that I knew I wanted were Sisyphean by Dempao Torishima. This is translated by Daniel Huddleston. This is also supposed to be another weird, weird book, but I've also heard amazing things about it. Like people who love it really love it. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll read what says on the back for this one. Um, the company stands atop a tiny deck supported by huge iron columns 100 meters high. The boss there is its president, a large creature of unstable shifting form once called human. The world of his dedicated worker contains only the deck and the sea of mud surrounding it, and the worker's daily routine is anything but peaceful. A mosaic novel of extreme science and high weirdness, and illustrated by the author, Sisyphean will change the way you see existence itself. So. Oh, there's supposed to be illustrations in it. I didn't know it was illustrated. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, it's quite a beast of a book. I think it's quite long. And yeah, it sounds deeply weird. And then I also grabbed Harmony by Project Ito. Um, I heard about this years ago from my friend Tara, who's recommended it to me multiple times since then. So I knew I wanted to get a copy. In the future, Utopia has finally been achieved thanks to medical nanotechnology and a powerful ethic of social welfare and mutual consideration. This perfect world isn't that perfect, though, and three young girls stand up to totalitarian kindness and super medicine by attempting suicide via starvation. It doesn't work, but one of the girls grows up to be a member of the World Health Organization. As a crisis threatens the harmony of the new world, Tuan discovers another member of her suicide pact, and together they must help save the planet from itself. So, that sounds pretty good. Um, and then the two books that I grabbed because um, Taiyo Fuji recommended them to me were The Ouroboros Wave by uh, Jyoji Hayashi, translated by Jim Hubbard. Um, this one has to do with a black hole. I think it's hard science fiction. I love hard science fiction, sold already. And the other one is The Next Continent by Isui Ogawa, translated by Jim Hubbard. And this is about a moon base. Um, yeah, so basically the next continent I believe is the moon and that also sounds really good. And then the last thing that I picked up there is this free sampler they were handing out when you bought something. It's Sayensu Fikushon 2016 and it has three stories in it um, by Tobihiro Taka, To Enjo, and Taiyo Fuji and uh, Fuji signed his story for me, so yay! <laughs> um, sometime later um, I was at the Borderlands um, section. Um, they're, they're a big bookstore and they had a section there. And I was looking, what was I looking for? I can't remember what exactly I was looking for, but I saw that they had two of the conversation pieces from Aqueduct. 
I was kind of hoping Aqueduct Press would be there, but I don't know if they they go to conventions and sell books like that. So I got The Adventure of the Incognita Countess by Cynthia Ward, which I don't know anything about. I just bought it because it says conversation pieces on it. Um, so this says, it's the easiest assignment a British intelligence agent could hope for. Lucy Harker needs only to see the secret plans of the Nautilus safely across the Atlantic. As German spies are largely a fantasy of newspapers, she anticipates no activities more strenuous than hiding her heritage as Dracula's damp hair daughter. Um, that must be the speculative aspect. <laughs> Then, among her fellow Titanic passengers, she discovers the incognita Countess Karnstein, and it seems the seductive vampire is in Germany's service. So, uh, you may be wondering why I would just jump out and, and buy these books um, in particular without caring what they're about. Um, this is the description of the series. Aqueduct Press's Conversation Pieces small paperback series celebrates the speculations and visions of the grand conversation of feminist SF. The series offers a wide variety of texts, from short fiction to essays, from speeches and poetry to interviews, correspondence, and group discussions, and um, in the case of the ones I've read so far, novellas. So there's that one, and then the second one I got is Distances by Vandana Singh. I've also just begun reading this, and it is a science fiction novella featuring aliens and mathematics and maybe linguistic aspects as well. I will find out, but so far it seems like it's going to be very mathematical, and I love that. And um, I also got a copy of Ian M. Banks by Paul Kincaid. This is one of the modern masters of science fiction books. I've read the one on Octavia Butler, and this one and the one on Lois McMaster Bujold have been on my list for a while. This particular one was nominated in the Best Related Work category in the Hugo Awards this year. It didn't win because, you know, No Time to Spare by Ursula Le Guin won, but uh, there was only an excerpt from it in the Hugo Voter Packet, so I wanted to get the entire thing. I think I'm, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy it, you know? Um, I haven't read that many of the culture novels by Banks yet, but I want to know more, and I expect this will be about him, but also about um, his SF work in general and, and really a deep dive on that. And then I got some freebies. Um, there were some tables where uh, free items were left out. There was a little booth where they put out a bunch of free books every day. And most of that stuff didn't look that interesting to me this year, and I didn't want to get too many free things um, because my luggage was filling up. Um, so I got this, which is Yachtinia, The Old World by Yasser Bajat. Um, I got this before I saw him. He was actually at the convention and he spoke on the Beyond Anglophone SFF panel. Um, and then I made the connection, it was him. So I picked this up because it's Arabic SF and it's in English. Um, and I don't know what it's about because there's nothing on the back of it. And then I think it was Brie who found this for me. It's a physical copy of Sparrow Hill Road by Seanan McGuire, which is the first book in one of her series it doesn't say which series, um, but I've wanted to read more of her novels for a while to just try them out. Um, I think this is probably urban fantasy and of a type of urban fantasy that I haven't read that much of, so dipping my toes in that water. And then lastly, let me reach for them. Oh my goodness. Ugh. It's so humid here. Like I spent a week in California and I came home and it's like living in a swamp. <laughs> That's really not pleasant. Um, so I'm sweating right now, and you probably didn't want to know that, but sorry. Uh, so while I was gone, my mother kindly opened my mail for me so I knew what I was getting in the mail, and I got some used books. Um, I have Gibbon's Decline and Fall by Sherry S. Tepper, which I thought was going to be one thing based on the cover, which features a lizard with wings, and it's like Technicolor. I don't know what's going on. Um, it doesn't match what, what it says on the back, in my opinion. Uh, the year is 2000. America is swept up in the tide of fundamentalism that is overwhelming the world. Does this sound familiar? Uh, suicide cults and paranoid militias are on the rise, and mobs of hooded men drive young women from the streets as the right-wing American alliance marshals its forces to close an iron grip on the United States. Yet even as a power-hungry alliance candidate makes his first move in a game that will land him the presidency, <laughs> one woman prepares to stand against him. 
Um, and there's a speculative element with people who are dead and like ghosts and stuff like that and saving humanity once again. Um, no doubt it will be quite a wild ride of a book with interesting things happening because that's always what happens when I read Sherry S. Tepper. Um, so we will see. And then I got Earthquake Weather by Tim Powers in the Fantasy Masterworks edition. I think this is actually number three in a series. If you know, please let me know. I wasn't paying attention. Um, I bought it used because I saw it wasn't available on Book, book Depository anymore, and I wanted to make sure I got a copy at some point because I'm, I'm collecting them. I have to admit that now. I'm collecting the Fantasy Masterworks, and I have most of them so far, but um, there are a few I still need to get. So um, if I need to get some other books first, let me know and I will get them. Um, I don't want to read the back of it because if it's later in a series, I don't want to spoil things. And the last thing, the last thing for this book haul is Adulthood is a Myth by Sarah Anderson, which is one of these Sarah Scribbles collections. Um, I, I love these little comics. You can read them all online for free if you want to. You've probably seen them because they're everywhere on Twitter. Uh, but they deal with just very relatable stuff like anxiety and this is the daily life stuff. I love them. Um, I've read all of the collections from the library and I wanted to own my own copies of them, so I'm getting them secondhand. So. That is my Worldcon slash August 2018 book haul. I don't think I really talked about what any of these books were about in good detail, but uh, let me know if any of them sound or look interesting, and if you've read any of them and you think I should read them sooner rather than later, please let me know. And thank you very much for watching! I'll be back with my next video at some point after I've had more sleep, and until then, bye!